All right, welcome to Wise Up On Air, hands on. This is gonna be an exciting edition. Uh, if you've been with us these past weeks, we've been going deep, deep, deep into features that are part of the new Wise 22.1 that released a couple weeks ago. And today we're gonna to do one on the just dropped Wise Adventure Game 22.1 Adventure. So here's my special guests today, Mess Meretti and Talika Klikian. Welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much. Hello. It's nice to be here. Yes. Ah, so good to be here with you today. Let's do a little introduction, though, for folks who don't know you from previous live streams, although you have been regular guests. Um, but, Mess, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at Audio Kinetic. Yeah. Um, my name is Mess. I live in Denmark. I'm a, an education content creator, I think my title is called. Something in between an educator and a product expert thing where I maintain things like I'm a lead on team training, workshops, those kind of things, or everything about uh, education, those kind of things. And of course, in that context also, Wise Adventure Game, which I was part of making as well. And um, yeah, the Wise courses and such, everything about them um, educating our users. So that's what I Great. do. It's so good to have you holding down that piece of the puzzle for Audio Kinetic and working with folks out there in the community who are just getting started with WISE as well as, you know, advanced folks looking to get leveled up on some of these new technologies. Yeah. So uh, great to have you doing that. And of course, the WISE Adventure game uh, is a, a history that we both share. And so <laughs> it's always a pleasure when we can get together and talk more about it. Uh, Tali, a little introduction of you. Yes, so I'm part of the spatial audio team, and I mostly work on integrating our spatial audio features into our game integration. So today we're going to see Unity. Uh, I uh, worked on the WAG 2022 uh, release for the spatial audio part of it. So that's what we're going to show you today. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, and it's what's great for us at Audio Kinetic is that uh, as we continue to evolve the technologies, you know, that we've incorporated into our samples, the Wise Adventure Game, the Wise Audio Lab, uh, our integration demo, you know, we continue to evolve, evolve those samples uh, to leverage that those new features. And part of that process is going back in and working it over and bringing it up to date. And so today's gonna to be all about what we did to bring the Wise Adventure game up to date for uh, and leveraging the features available in 22.1, uh, as well as finally carrying forward the object-based pipeline that we introduced in Wise 21.1 and unlocking audio objects as part of the Wise Adventure game. So excited to share some of that with folks. Uh, do we have every, anyone in the chat who has jumped into the world of audio object authoring yet? Let us know, share your insights. And as we're weaving our thread through these new and exciting things, feel free to drop any questions in the chat. Uh, we're just kind of taking it one piece at a time and happy to stop along the adventure and talk more about it. So with that, I think we are going to jump into one of the uh, first things that you're gonna need to do is how do you get it? Yeah, should we take a look at that? Yeah. So uh, do you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so in the uh, launcher, now called Audio Kinetic Launcher, under samples, you see when you click that up, you get to Wise Adventure Game and also, of course, also Wise Audio Lab. But we have a few versions in here of the Wise Adventure Game. Let's try to open it up to see all of them. But there's quite a few so far that the updates we've done uh, over time, we try to update it as along with the features we provide with Wise. 
But uh, to install yours, let's look at it like this. You'll now see there's a 22.1 version, 2022. Uh, version, uh, version that has featuring Unity uh, 2023.0 and this is an LTS version. So any versions below that would be fine, but it's not meant for certification. There are two certifications using this, but it's nice for uh, experiencing uh, yeah, these features. Right, so which is to say that on. we, we yeah. haven't updated the certifications for this new yeah. version, uh, yeah. but it's ahead of things with all of the new hotness in 22.1. Exactly, yeah. Cool. Um, and when you click install, I've already installed both of them, but you can see when I click install here, if you want to follow us, what we do here, there's a Unity source project here you need to have enabled too. Uh, this wise adventure game out top here is just a playable build of it, uh, but that would be much faster just to get the two top ones there. But yeah. That's how you get it. So it's the WISE project with all of the assets. It's an yes. executable for the WISE adventure game that you can just double click and jump right into playing a build of it. And then it's also that Unity source project. So when you couple it with the right version of the Unity editor, you can, you can actually see the entire game with all of the components and get your hands into it uh, across the, the Unity project. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the entire project of stuff that you need for this development, right? Seeing how you would be in a real game production, because in comparison to Wise Audio Lab, which is much more of an A-B comparison of how you can like toggle on and off certain features of Wise, this yeah. is much more meant as a, this is how you would work in a game production. You have these kind of things. It's not as clean in many situations as, as the educational thing would be with the wise early lab maybe but it's it's much more meant as like here's a sandbox of stuff you can just throw around and and use as you see fit so, yeah. great and so we're not going to go into you know all of the systems that are in the wise adventure game there's lots of um there's lots of videos on our youtube channel there's tons of documentation including uh the wise adventure game doc that steps you through all of the systems as well as the certifications that don't apply to this version but give you a clear picture of everything in there and we expanded it at some point to involve spatial audio uh, and so there's a, there's a piece of that that we're going to be digging into and talking about how we've evolved that for this current version um, but before we get there, I think there's another feature that we want to talk about. Yeah. One thing that uh, we should definitely talk about is the third-person listener. That's, I guess that's the one you're hinting to. Yeah. And uh, so uh, in WISE 2022, uh, there's a, a new feature that is perfect for the WISE adventure game, right? Because in, let me just try to play the game here, and you can see that... Um, Let's keep the dialogue here. So we have a camera looking at the player and we have the character in the middle. So in this case, the listener, like in the in the old days of Wise Adventure game, the listener would be on the camera. But it would not be super you know, like representative of how you would play the game because you, you're playing this character in the middle of your game. So, so in fact, when you rotate your camera and this is, if the camera is a listener, the distance to optics and such is also changing, right? Because you're moving that listener. So a third-person listener in the, in the self separates these two things. And um, just before we get into this, I want to I wanna connect wise and just so you can see how it looks in the game object profiler because there's a new icon for that too. So I go to layouts and game object profiler, start the game. And then I'll just find the player. I'll click here, go to player, and zoom a bit in. And now you can see there's two parts here. There's on the right here, there's this is the camera moving around the player. And in the middle, you now have to have this small icon here, which is the probe. Okay, so what's the difference, right? The listener itself 
when you it's on the camera still it relates to all the orientation so the the direction you're looking at right so if you hear something like this and it happens behind you turn around it will be in front of you uh, that should of course still be like that because you're looking in that direction but for the player itself there is a probe on it and that's the small icon here this determines the distance to things so when i l run up here to the windmill for example and i look at the windmill the distance is calculated from that adventure to the windmill and not yeah. from the camera itself because then i it will get louder as i rotate so uh, yeah and i guess i just continued Damien. i will show you a few examples then because let's go to the uh, campfire i know there's a campfire in the desert so i'm teleporting to that here let's turn on the campfire and uh, let's let's take out the music a bit more. so and in wires i will find the campfire sound click on it maybe solo it so we can just look at that one and let's look at the attenuation of it so in here you can see there's maybe search for desert so we only see that one when i go closer of course it's getting closer uh, because i'm moving both things but when i turn the camera here closer to the campfire notice that it's not the like the distance from the camera to the campfire that is affecting it anymore it's actually the player's distance that affects how loud the sound would be but the like the positioning of the sound you still hear when i turn the camera the orientation of stuff is still happening on the camera so that's really what the third person listener is um, another uh, example i want to show also is uh, evil hits in the wise adventure game because if we jump to the cave here down here there's a bunch of evil hits i'll just attract a few here and i will set the mode to god mode so i won't die and so let's take a look here in the uh, wise project find the evil hits and in here there's a certain sound called evil hit attack bite so with even evil hits when you have a lot of them you can already see now that if i pause the game and look at the player so there's already a lot of evil hits around you which ones are the most important to play of these sounds well of course it's the ones that are the closest to you because though those those are the creatures that are just about to bite you but in the old version of this well the 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 distance for these things would be related to the camera and not the player itself so when we put something like a voice limit on and this is a, is a thing you can learn much more about in the wise 251 course uh, but when you put a voice limit on like say you want max three sounds to occur at once and it should be based on distance here big distance then with the old system it would pretty much look at these two evil heads here and think okay these are the two most important because they are closest to the camera but in fact there's another one over here even closer to the player that would be more important to play and now because of this new system with third person listener the, pos the position is on the adventurer and hereby this this limiting system works much better right it's much more accurate it will depend on where you are listening from position wise yeah, and this adds a lot of flexibility yeah. for folks who have a third person perspective, or maybe they're working with RTS or some kind of isometric overview. And it, it just opens up the flexibility to be able to have dynamic positioning of that without, um, yeah, without the challenges that we've faced authoring for those third person cameras in the past. Exactly, yeah. Okay, so so let's let's look at how this is set up. Great. And if we if you're following in your own Wise Adventure Game project, go to the main camera. Just to focus on it here. It's right next to the player. And let's close some of these scripts down. Good to see some some folks in the chat. I just want to mention, give a shout out to uh, to PDX and. Uh, 
Baseball Reload. I know that's Brian out there. Good to have you with us for the ride today. Uh, it is huge for RTS and top-down games. So yeah, thanks for the shout out on that. We're excited to uh, enable folks with this new third-person listener API. Cool. Take it away, Mass. Great. So how do you get this working? Well, you can add something called an AK listener distance probe in uh, in Unity integration. You can add this to in any like integration in Unity you put in, you have the script with you. And there is a distance probe. And it basically means that you can take any other object and drag it into, you can take the player here, drag it into that inlet here. And now this will be the positioning, the positioning will be based off there. Well, in this game, though, it's important to say that there are cutscenes, and we can even, when we click play here, we can see that there are certain cutscenes, where, like this one, for example. And here, it would not make sense for us to use that probe on the player, because we don't need to hear the sounds that are down at where the player is. We need to hear the sounds that are close to the player, or to the camera, at this position. So we do swap them around, and you will also notice in the script here now, AK Listener Distance Probe, there is a main camera object in it now. And how to do that? Well, you actually have to create a custom script for that. It's right up here. I created the one called AK Listener Distance Probe Changer. Um, and basically, I put in the other probe that I want to switch. It's not in the integration by standard, but you can go into Wise Adventure Game and steal the code if you want to. But you need, of course, some logic, like from the game side, when are you in a cutscene, and then tell that script to swap it out, right? Um, but yeah, you can definitely do that in runtime, and then you will adapt to that. Yeah, and that, so that yeah. just means that you have that control during, during cutscenes or camera pans to be able to position that... Uh, distance probe wherever you want wherever it makes yeah, sense like exactly. there might be yeah. you know cinematic scenarios where you want to to move that camera along uh, move that distance probe along with the camera and then other scenarios where okay I actually want to maintain the ambience uh, of that location where the player is so I'm just going to keep it where it is and it decoupling it like that uh, gives you that greater flexibility without uh yeah without the challenges yeah. even even the games at like adventure style games like these where you swap between different characters you might also want to swap the probe at the same time and those kind of things so it's it's a runtime friendly um it should be set though for uh, for this game uh, if you want to like a small hint for those that might set it up like this when the when the character when you have NPCs that I'm let's just take off this when you have NPCs that might be important to play while being elsewhere and he, or here we have a, the wizard in the game that needs to continue talking then if we swap the probe to the camera and move the camera away we wouldn't be able to hear the NPC right so what we did in the Wise Adventure game was basically to add let's see a quest givers as state that swaps the attenuation on and off. So basically, um, you can see here, it swaps off the attenuation based on whether you're in a cutscene or not, meaning that the sound won't decrease when you're far away. We can try to Hello, adventure. see Our if this cutscene has been struck by a plague so of even evil. on distance, this dark essence this sound is keeps consuming. Playing. So nice. keep that in mind for important things. Nice. That's a great overview of that uh, third person distance probe. Uh, <laughs> what a great new feature. Uh, yeah. any other any other aspects of that worth mentioning? I think, I think we kind of covered that was, a, bit, right? it was pretty yeah, comprehensive. Yeah. yeah. Let us know if you have questions about it. Uh, we're jumping right in with the cool new stuff at, that are part of this new version of uh, the Wise Adventure game. So, yeah, uh, dig, yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay, cool. So with that, uh, ready to jump into object-based audio? Is that is that where we're at? Okay, cool. 
Um, well, that's a thing that I did a little bit of work on. And, you know, Mess, you've, you've been doing uh, a ton of outward facing workshops on, on object-based audio in the community. I'm wondering if you have a short summary that's honed from that that would bring people onto the page with with what it is and 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 really why. Yeah, yeah. Well, OptiBased is something that I, I usually also say this in workshops and such that it's not something that is widely spread yet. Like it's not something that everybody, every game might use yet, but it is, I can always promise that it's going to be the future of how you would position sounds because it brings another level of precision, precision with your sounds themselves. Instead of like using channels, you might do a stereo mix, 5.1 mix and so on. Uh, you can, if you mix for optics, it really just doesn't matter what kind of channel based you might be using it for of course you might do a channel base as well but the optics will be sent separately so you can have sounds that can be placed in exactly that direction no matter what the endpoint might be uh, so it's super flexible for those kind of things and also brings us on to something like hrtf 3d audio methods that you need these kind of highly precise like um, positions of stuff in order to calculate the the, the, the best possible HRTF for your uh, ears, right? So it, it's not just enough to, to take your game with your channels, port it to using HRTF, because you need to still think about like how can you improve your quality of your audio, your, how you send sounds in order to really utilize HRTF and make that experience better. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, as you mentioned, it's it's a these are decisions that you make and we're still in the early days of having these tools in people's hands to be able to make these decisions. And so that's one of the cool things about uh, working at Audio Kinetic and having these samples to work with is that we're learning right along with the community, you know, what some of the best practices are and, and really some of the things that, that work well in one scenario and not in another. So I'm happy to walk through uh, a bit of the decisions and choices that were made in the Wise Adventure game for 22.1. Uh, Tali, you sticking around with us for this? Okay. Well, I definitely uh, chime in anytime if something seems good. Uh, and I can't wait to get your perspective on those spatial audio updates. So with that, I'm going to step into the WISE project and talk you through some of the routing decisions that we've made. And again, this is a project that we are carrying forward into you know, the new object-based pipeline, really unlocking the flow of sounds through what was already in place. So if you're a developer out there and you have a project already and you haven't thought about using or leveraging uh, headphone spatialization, you know, there's still time, right? Because today we're going to walk through some of the changes that we made to unlock the potential that headphone-based spatialization brings to, to your project. I'm going to start up here at the system audio device, and this became a uh, a new our new cross-platform system audio device as part of uh, Wise 2021.1, and the ability to allow 3D audio when it's available at the endpoint, available and active. So on platforms that have it, when you toggle um, spatialization on and off. Allowing 3D audio at the audio device will uh, hopefully do the right thing. Uh, and uh, we've gone deep on audio objects in past live streams. We got a bunch of blog posts online that you can dig deeper into. And so I'm not going to go detailed on other aspects of the audio device. I'm just going to jump right down to the master mixer hierarchy next. 
Uh, so from here, we have two top level buses. We have the non-world bus and the world bus. And we can see that the non-world bus has been set to a mixed configuration. And we can tell that here by the bus icon here. And looking at that configuration, we've set it to the same as pass-through mix. So in a scenario where there are audio objects available and spatialization is enabled at the endpoint, the pass-through mix is the part of the mix that will, will not be processed by any of this spatialization. So it will only be the sounds as designed without any filtering or any other processing on it by the endpoint. And the reason we're doing that is this is the music. This is our music stingers. This is the UI. Uh, so we don't really want in, uh, in this general case where we have these non-world elements to do any of this processing. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Sending that right to the pass-through mix, ensuring that if people have spatial uh, enabled, that stuff's going to stay just the way we want it. Uh, over here on the world side, we've set this bus configuration to same as parent. And the reason we do that is because now that configuration can be defined by whatever the output configuration that's set. So whether you're using uh, bookshelf speakers, five one surround, or headphone-based spatialization, we can automatically adapt to that and, and everything can dynamically reconfigure based on those settings. So setting that to same as parent uh, allows for that. Now then, the next bunch of buses, I'm not gonna go deep, too deep into, except to say that, uh, is that at this next level, they've all been um, set as a non-mixing type bus. So their bus configuration is all the same as parent. And if, uh, depending on the settings that we'll see down in the actor mixer hierarchy, we can just allow things to flow through the master mixer and arrive at the right category destination. So those categories are, as we have established, the same as pass-through mix, the main mix, which is a channel-based spatialized bed in a headphone spatialization situation, uh, and audio objects or system audio objects. And these are those precise um, locations locations for sounds that Mess was talking about, giving you that highest level of precision in a headphone-based spatialization scenario. Okay, we're through the master mixer. Everyone still with me? Uh, looking in the chat, what do we got? Some good distance probe conversations. The question here, will WISE get a Mac native release? That's a left turn, but I'll take it. Someday there will be a wise Mac native release. You can count on it. So we'll get back to you. And thanks for the question. Uh, we're thinking about you. Cool. Uh, whew, back into the actor mixer. So let's dig in. Uh, we have a bunch of top level um, actor mixers in this category. And I wanted to step through them in a couple of different ways. Uh, so the first thing is the player. Uh, the player to me is, well, it's the embodiment of your character. Um, and to that extent, it felt like the expectation that I had is that I would hear that player character uh, with all of the all of the fidelity that uh, that I expected. And so what I did down in the actor mixer is to direct the flow of audio objects using metadata. So if you haven't heard of metadata yet, or you're looking at your, your wise authoring and asking yourself, 
where's the metadata? Uh, over here in the plus tab, you can toggle that on here and see that metadata tab. And what I've done right off the bat for the player is I've overridden the parent. And if we look at the parent, which is this world actor mixer, what we have is uh, we have the system output settings defined as mix to main. So it's at this level that I'm choosing to direct the flow of sounds as they're passing through the actor mixer. So an alternate way would be up here in the master mixer. I could also set this to the same as main mix configuration. Uh, but at that point, any sounds that arrive to that bus will be mixed to that configuration. And I, I don't have the kind of granularity of control that I want uh, in the master mixer. And so I'm leaving that as same as parent. Uh, and then making my decisions about what category of sound to send things to using metadata. So the player uh, has got a override for the same as pass through mix. Okay. And so again, I want to preserve all of the frequencies there and make sure that uh, make sure that things. Uh, sound the way I expect them to without any of the spatialization or filtering. Now, but there's one piece in there uh, in the magic actor mixer called Magic Blast Impact. And now that's something that I really wanted to arrive with spatial precision because it's something that is cast from the character, it has an impact in the world. And so what I've done is I've overridden the parent for this and allowed that to flow through uh, as, as an audio object. Uh, so again, making that decision granularly <laughs> at the point of use where you want something to uh, you know, have that precision felt like uh, a really nice way to, well, inherit and get the most out of that uh, parent-child relationship in WISE, but also be able to, yeah, let flow that precision for the magic blast. Stepping up the hierarchy, we've got the objects and we've got those inheriting from that world actor mixer to the same as main mix configuration. Uh, it's working great uh, in that we've got uh, the props and destruction. Um, doors and props are just flowing right up through as the main mix, but for these destruction sounds, again, I really wanted those to be preserved through the pipeline and arrive with the greatest precision. And so overriding that metadata uh, and letting those flow through and under a scenario where headphone spatialization is enabled, giving them that greatest precision. precision. So again, like point of use, being able to override and let those objects flow. Moving up the hierarchy, we've got the quest givers. This is kind of the same thing as that player-centric sounds. Uh, I've got those overriding the parent association of main mix and sending all of that dialogue through the pass-through mix. Again, dialogue can work or not work when it's spatialized. It's really a creative decision and certainly in a scenario where you have a lot of NPCs that are kind of chattering, you got ambient positional stuff. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing spatialization really adding to that positionality.
But in the case of our blacksmith and wizard, you know, you're having pretty close proximity conversations with these folks if they're not narrating the story. And so letting them through the pass-through mix without any kind of filtering really made sense to me. Um, well, and that's where it gets exciting because up here at the enemies, we're just wholesale overriding the parent metadata association and letting these flow through as audio objects uh, when that is enabled. And so you can think of enemies as, you know, your biggest threat in the wise adventure game. If threat is the right word, uh, they're so cute, <laughs> especially the little bushy creature. Right. Um, and so, but having that ability to locate them, uh, especially when you can't see them and, and maybe we can drop into the, the forest at some point and hear some of those, uh, footsteps of the forest creatures as they're tracking you and hunting you down, uh, as well as just all of the other cool sounds of those enemies, uh, spit plant bullets, the chomping head spawn sounds, like all that stuff uh, just has a level of precision that really elevates the experience. So the last thing I'll talk about here as far as decision-making process goes, is the ambiences. And here's what I did. I got a couple different sections of the ambiences, the way that these are broken out. We've got the ambient regions uh, that I rep are represented across all of the different areas of the Wise Adventure game, cave, the dungeon, pine forest, etc. And like, uh, same as Pass Through Mix. Like, they have been authored with such care and detail that it didn't make sense to me to, to send those through any spatialization for the main mix. Um, and this is a, a new field and a new area. So what worked for this game, what worked uh, for my ears, might not be what works for yours, but... In my experience with the Wise Adventure game, I wanted to preserve all the frequencies and that rich ambient background. Uh, and so I just sent it to the pass-through mix. And, and at this point, I just overwrote it, changed the system output settings, and directed it to there. And then we got down to the ambient elements. And these are things like the ambient day and night. So digging in deeper to that, things like birds and frogs or owls and crickets. Uh, and there's gonna, be a, there's gonna be a lot of these things um, randomly occurring, you know, mess and Jakob did a great job of filling out the environment with these randomized elements. And while I want them to be spatialized, uh, I don't need the precision of their location because I can't walk mm -hmm. up to a cricket and necessarily, you know, tap it on the head. Uh, and so I'm just allowing that to inherit the system output settings of the world actor mixer and sending them to the main mix. So that main mix is that channel-based mix that, uh, that will spatialize when headphone spatialization is enabled. That's the walkthrough of audio object and object-based decisions that we've creatively brought to the Wise Adventure game. But you know what? It's all up to you because this sample's available to download. Give it a try. And in fact, let us know what you think uh, because we're just on this adventure with you trying to figure out what sounds great and how we can continue to evolve our idea of what the best sound is. So, uh, you enjoy it and drop any questions about there you want to like like yo 
why why aren't the frogs objects they're so cool <laughs> like or yeah. you know why not uh why not spatialize some of these things and I, and my hot take on that is like put your ears on it listen to it in the environment and and then and then make your own decision so it's all there but maybe we should listen to some of it mess yes. yeah, yeah jump in do that but but the great talk and i also just wanted to mention as well for those that might think that you need to put metadata on everything right there is also a lot of decision making that happens from the why side of things and here's a link that i usually show to all the participants that i have in workshops and such there's the role of the system audio device where it it basically looks at the sounds that you don't really set any specifics up on and it checks, okay, so does it have 3D position and such? Uh, and if it has such, right, it will, this is for, an audio object is rooted to endpoint as only meets, if the field meets these requirements, right? So there are some requirements for whys and checks, check marks, all these things, and decides should it be optics or should it be pass-through or should it be main mix, right? So in case you don't want to set all of this up yourself, with metadata and all these things, you know, there is a great logical system for when is something meant to be an audio object or not. Um, so, yeah. yeah. It's great. Some of those decisions do get made for yeah. you. And the, the maybe the, the last piece of that before we listen to some examples yeah, uh, yeah. is that, you know, I showed you the master mixer and we had set things up there at, in the same as parent configuration, right? So the important part of uh, authoring this from the metadata side is that when it does arrive, when those sounds do arrive to the mixer, uh, in order to, you know, flow through and reach their category definition or behavior definition yeah. in yeah. the metadata, they they can't be mixed in the mixer. Yeah, I know that's yeah. crazy, uh, which is to say that. <laughs> That if you do mix them uh, before they're able to be sorted into those three categories, mm -hmm. that metadata will be mixed away into whatever the configuration of the bus is. So if that I like the way they consumed, yeah. it will be consumed, right? Yes. Yeah, at that the, point, so, the metadata yeah. will be consumed, uh, yeah. and maybe the the second the last to last thing is the new 3d audio bed mixer plugin yeah yeah uh, that is great too yeah, yeah yeah so i'm not going to talk too much about that i'm going to direct folks back to a great talk that uh core engineer philip milo gave at our recent wise worldwide online expo uh, where he gave an overview of the 3d audio bed mixer and how that helps you manage your objects in the mixer uh, and yeah, do some, do some uh, prioritization of sorts of those. So cool. cool. Okay. Uh, well, first off, I'm just going to show you for, if you're working on windows, there's a couple of plugins you can use for this kind of 3d audio HTF rendering, right. In order to have optic based audio. And you can see when I right click on my sound icon in Windows here, spatial sound, there's, I've got Windows Sonic and also have Dolby Atmos for headphones. Uh, both of these plugins can be used with the sample here. You just need to keep in mind if you use Dolby Atmos, you need to uh, go into the device, you'll just click the show and, and drag this number a bit down probably uh, because there's not so many optics available, but you can use both of them. And if I do that, I will enable it and I will reconnect my screen because it restarts the sound card. So um, I need to reconnect my screen share. But once I do that, take a look in the audio device here. You see, is 3D audio active? No, at this moment. And when I put it on here, you see, yes, it's on now. So let me just re reconnect my screen share so you can hear what it's, it's going on. Um, here we go. And just quickly testing if here. Sound through? Great. Yeah. All right. So um, with this up, 
You can now see these three paths of sound going through. You see my available system artists right now. I don't have any, but that's probably, let's see here when I connect to the game. Let's try to play the game then. It's probably because they are reserved by the game. Still only zero. Okay. Um, just quickly closing down this. Mm -hmm. Why is pretty opening again? It's an absolute here. scenario because at the endpoint, or you know, in this case, on the in the Windows operating system, there's a finite number of what they call system audio objects, and these are reserved by applications in order to uh, in order to get the the kind of spatial positioning. So one thing to make sure is that the authoring is not checked uh, to use system audio objects. Off. So we got that we got that covered. Uh, I'm trying to reconnect the in here. Oops. Yes, okay, great. Available system audio optics with the Windows Sonic 111, right? And you can see how many we're using at this given moment, but right now there's only pass-through sounds sent through. But what is probably very important to start out with, and I already talked a bit about it with a third-person listener, right? Let's go up to the windmill here and look at it. Now we're standing with the camera looking at it and the player looking at it as well. And then we have a new layout called um, audio object profiler and here there's a bunch of views but first off I just want to look at this one with the head here because just because wise adventure game is a game where the listener is not necessarily on the head right it's not a you don't look as a first person shooter right uh, notice that when you look from the head here and fall onwards and I turn the camera now it's suddenly behind the head here but not be behind the adventurous head here right so don't confuse these two things this head here is related to the camera's listener right the rotational thing whereas this adventure here is just the positioning of stuff so when i go closer with the uh, it will, the sound will go closer right but uh, the rotation here will depend on it like this so some specifics for my adventure game at least it makes good sense yeah all right let's uh, let's try to go into the woodlands then yeah and uh, let's see what uh, happened actually before we go in there toggle god mode because we're gonna get into danger so jump to woodlands and just to get some more light let's change the time here Turn off the music. And I want to look only at the evil spit plants. The bullets themselves. You see here from the head here, the bullets are flying past. I implemented a special uh, stormtrooper uh, mode where the spit planes are not able to hit anything. It's not in the wise adventure game by default, but you can certainly do that too. But now that I captured something, you can see here. That you can quite easily see where the sounds are moving relative to the head. Now, keep in mind these each of these bullets and such are becoming like audio objects. So when a sound here is placed, say let's take this one here, evil spit paint loop one right in front of you here. No matter how many speakers is around you, right, it will be in front of you, like. If are you using a stereo thing? Well, it would be rendered in front of you and then in, at your endpoint with with this end, uh, endpoint device you have, which is in my case, I just use stereo, right? Just be rendered to that device. But so it's very scalable, right? Do I use a hundred speakers around it? It will be placed just in the middle there. So keeping that in like uh, best possible spatial precision as possible. Yeah. yeah, because when you talk about the main mix, that's a channel-based spatialized yes. mix yeah. in your headphones, and it's limited to the number of channels around you that are virtually positioned, right? 
Continue. And while we do allow for up to fifth order ambisonic as uh, as that main mix channel based format, um, well, that's not always what's defined by the headphone spatializer or by the endpoint. And so, uh, so giving you that greatest amount of precision are those audio objects that you know through authoring we've allowed to be preserved and used when those system audio objects are available. And for those that might be as slightly hesitant on oh, audio objects, a new feature, what, what's going to be the, the, the disadvantage of using that? Well, the good thing is that all of this audio objects and such, if you don't use have audio objects available, right? So it's going to fall back to using channels, right? So you're not going to lose anything. It's just going to improve the experience for 3D uh, audio systems and HDF systems, right? Just improve the precision of everything. So yeah, another uh, case I wanted to show also is, um, uh, and this is maybe like, of course you can show a lot of different examples for how optics are flying around. Here we have some different views that you can dive more into in many of the other views, right? But I want to show you an example that there's not really an ideal fix for but just something you need to keep in mind and that is related to effects. So let's connect the game here again, play. Yes. And I have audio, I'm using audio optics right now. So I'll jump to the library in this game. And uh, maybe I'll just spawn a small radio here. Hmm. Greetings, adventurer. I heard you'll be venturing into the and woodlands. Let's look at the Word travels the best in these profile. parts. You would best so, be careful. This one, where we I was there yesterday to gather wood for my here. smithy, okay, it's, and it's, the dark plants had already taken radio here and Focus on it. Luck alone saves me. Be confused with all I these may sounds. make implements of battle, okay, so here but you can I'm see. no warrior, as the evil sent a ball and of venom my way. Let's just go out of play mode here. You can see we have the blacksmith radio. This is the radio. This is sound that is played on the radio. Fed through various pipelines in our structure, right? But then suddenly over here, there's a world bus and there's a pitch shifter on it. This one, like luckily, is not active at this stage. But you can see there's like a times 28 watt. So there's... 28 times of pitch shifters on this device. And the same goes for the flanger here, right? Um, and, and the same happens when you go into that slow motion mode. Uh, let's go in again here. Go to the library. And just let's go to uh, Spain, spawn the radio first in audio mm. plus. Greetings, adventurer. Go to I heard you'll uh, be venturing slow into motion. The you can see here the purpose of that thing, right? And when I click on it, you can also, ah, it's not showing here. Yeah, there you can see that it's it's being dragged down to zero, right? Uh, so why do I have so many instances of that one? Well, the reason is that because it's an object, the sound is sent as an object through the pipeline here, and it gets to the world bus here. This world bus is not mixing. like. As we notice in here, this world bus here, it's just sending as parent. Like there's no mixing on it. You, I, I could set it to a channel configuration so it mixes it right actually, but right now it's not mixing. So it's it's a the new some new audio optic effects that is then applied to. So for each of the optic that passes through the bus, an optic will be put on that as the pitch shifter, right? So that effect sound will will have that pitch shift effect. Um, meaning that actually each sound we send through this world uh, bus here will get this pitch shift effect. 28 instances, or I even see a scene like 40 instances at, at one point. How how if like how impactful is that really? Well, if you look at CPU usage, you can see a P, uh, pitch shift to CPU. The CPU is not like it's not because it has a, t a big impact. It's also a very efficient plugin, right? Uh, but in case the case that you have thousands of sounds going through a certain bus, right, 
it might have a like a certain another impact on your performance than it does in our game. But because it doesn't have a big of importance for our game, we chose to not use the old fashioned like a uh, old fashioned the channel based method of of just having pitch shift on I say x amount of channels. Uh, but that would definitely drag down the performance. Make sure you only putting pitch shift on a certain amount of channels, but the, instead of audio optics with this amount. But and it, it makes a on good game, right? Makes a good yeah. case. Again, this is an optimization step that you want to take as your game scales and as you're making these object considerations. Because as you mentioned, you know, for each object that arrives at uh, at a bus that preserves those objects uh, with an effect. Uh, an instance of that effect will get created and in order to process that object without consuming its metadata. <laughs> uh, and so and so you can end up in situations like that. And so it's definitely great to surface that to folks as their production scales. It's one of those considerations. I think if we had had audio objects back when we implemented that feature of slowdown and flanging, we might yeah. have yeah. oriented the hierarchy of the mixer yeah. a little bit differently in order to get mm -hmm. more uh, precision on what was certainly yeah what was applied. Especially since especially since Wise Venture Game is actually portable for mobile devices too, right? Yeah. So you you need in those cases to be more strict about your performance. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely rework it so that you are sending many of these slow motion sounds through a mixed thing. Right. You also, like you can also argue that like this slow motion effect itself does it need to be so like in, super precise to indicate where the sounds are or is it more of an effect you put on as a layer on your sure. mix right sure um so yeah cool cool great, great illustration of yeah one of those things that you'll you'll come across it eventually so having some foresight yeah. about it will help you make decisions and plan so cool. I'm going to address a question. And from, you should yeah, go yeah, ahead. Okay, maybe also say that I, I'm not going to show any like in, much more of the audio behind this, but go in and open the game, play it for a while, listen yeah. to it, right? Uh, it's much better experience than seeing us play it. Uh, try it out yourself. Also, the Wise Audio Lab, you can also try out the experience of 3D audio on HHF and such. So try that out. Yep. Toggle that on and off and let us know. There's a question in the chat. Do I have to change any settings on the Mac? And we do not currently support any headphone spatialization on the Mac platform right now. And so this is something that on a PC, you can just in your Windows sound settings, toggle it on and off. Uh, the Windows Sonic uh, spatializer comes with uh, your Windows installation. Uh, but we do not have support on Mac right now for any spatial solutions. But it will come. And when we when it comes, it will also be available on uh, iOS devices. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Cool. Uh, well, I think we're going to drop some links into the chat for folks who want to get their hands on audio objects, uh, some simple steps, a little bit of background information, and, uh, and some context about this whole feature. So feel free to jump off into that later. But meanwhile, I'm excited to jump into the bonus area of the Wise Adventure game, and that's the <laughs> Spatial Audio DLC. DLC, don't need to download something else. It no, comes you don't. with the rest of the game. <laughs> <laughs> just you need to uh, enable it somewhere in um the menu Should so let's that? just go yeah yeah and because yeah. the first thing i want to show is uh the map in the game object 3 viewer so when you play the wag you can open the menu and go to the audio tab and then you can enable spatial audio over there by clicking on this button and uh, when you do that Everything stays the same except when you approach the dungeon. The dungeon that, get, that gets loaded is another map, uh, which is called the Spatial Audio Dungeon. So, 
Uh, let's go. You can um, travel to there. And the Space Walter dungeon is different because uh, we added some geometry. You want to go to the library uh, or the dungeon? The dungeon. dungeon. Uh, so if you check the Geometry 3 viewer, uh, I... Uh, so we have like some um, rooms, some geometry, some portals, uh, and everything that you need. Can you like turn off the music? <laughs> yeah, it's certainly. <laughs> One thing uh, that you want to do sometimes is put the music off so you can really hear like some reflections. Uh, when like right now, the reflections that we see is the, the fire, uh, but everything just quickly is a reflect focus enabled. On the player. Yeah, go for it. So, I can, uh, I can so, so what we did in this version compared to before, because in twenty one that one there was a spatial audio map uh, that doesn't that hasn't changed. But the thing is we optimized our map and and reduced the number of triangles so i have i went and checked out numbers that i got like before we had more than ten thousand triangles <laughs> in our dungeon <laughs> which is not something we recommend so we changed that and now we have less than a thousand triangles which is better uh the same goes for like the diffraction edges. Some things, like quick things that we did is like the pillars, for example, that we can see here are just blocks. And if we go um, and we, we can see one in front of the adventurers on the right in the wag, like it's a detailed like pillar, but the, in like sound wise, you don't really um, see that if you just listen. So, so what's, blocks is what's so bad about having a ton of triangles? What's so bad? Um, it's because it uses a lot of CPU. Each time we have to, um, like for example, this pillar has diffraction enabled, and so each of its edges uh, is analyzed to know, like, is there going to be a diffraction path over here, over there? And if there is a multiple ones, then calculations is more uh, expensive. Perfect. Yeah. And thanks for that. Great description. For reflect also and for diffraction, like both. For reflect, it just adds a bunch more image sources that are not that uh, important. Another really uh, easy thing you can do to reduce the number of triangles is removing anything that is on walls and just have the wall as a single plane. For example, like this pillar is not in uh can you put like a wi wire frame i feel like it's a oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. View. Um, go up to the eye up here and i find the wireframe here display as wireframe yeah um so if you like zoom out a little bit like uh yeah over here you can see there's a diffraction on like a, a flat wall and i didn't add any of these pillars on the walls because they're just like decorations for your eyes but for the sound doesn't really matter uh that your wall is a little bit closer for like mm. what like um, a, a foot in yeah. <laughs> doesn't really matter um and you're not you're not uh, even like auditorily able to differentiate the sound coming from there or from slightly yeah left right um so Depends on, I guess, your attenuation curves, but our attenuation curves are not that precise. Um, so someone's asking, do we need a wise reflect to make it work? And uh, the game that is like the, the when you download it from the launcher, it comes with um, all the sound banks that you need. So there are reflex sound banks in there. But if you regenerate new sandbags then and you don't have reflect, then you're gonna lose them. So uh, and so yes and no. <laughs> you don't need. But the other thing is that if you get an academic license, I believe there's a wise reflect with that too. So you can just regenerate uh, with it. I'm not sure about this. We can always Otherwise, request an evaluation. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, another thing is you can. Um, not generate banks and just connect with wise and then you'll be able to see everything reflect does you just won't be able to to build some generate some banks with reflect in it um what else are we going to talk about uh yeah well since we're talking about reflect let's just say that the simplified reflect was added 
to our uh, project. But right now in the WAG, it's not using like the full potential of for Simplify Reflect. But if I can do like a small um, resume of what Reflect Simplified Reflect is, we can uh, maybe just look at uh, our Reflect Ox bus. And the difference is if you go actually in the general settings of the Ox bus. Uh, yes, certainly. So the only settings. difference between uh, before simplified and after simplified is that we enabled uh, we uh, changed the bus configuration to audio objects, and this will uh, just allow Reflect to be able to see uh, sounds that are inputted in the Oxbus, um, which attribution these sounds are using, right? And instead of having custom curves, you can. Uh, use the attenuation curve of each sound and so before you would have maybe like right now we have only one aux bus with one reflect effect you can go back to the reflect effect uh, editor if you want um, right now down here, actually. yes uh, right now we're not using this at its full potential because all of our, our curves are custom there is one curve that is uh, set as use attenuation but like both of these curves uh, have no equivalent curves on uh, the, the attenuations that pass through this reflect. But if you want to play with it and change custom to use attenuation, you can, and you can be, you can like use uh, the attenuations that are set on the sounds instead of those custom curves that you author inside of reflect effect. So that's like the the, the reason why it's named simplified is that you don't need to author a new set of curve in reflect if you want you can use the attenuation curves that you already set it for your sound yeah right now it's use project occlusion so anyway yeah it's and actually the most same. i think every all sounds in our project right now is using the project right version but it can be right written which you, yeah this yeah. is also a new thing uh it's not really related to spatial audio but this is also a new thing that you can play with in the wag and everywhere in the wag not just in the dungeon and you can modify the attenuations of your sound and directly in there you can have some diffraction curves met but if you're not using spatial audio you can modify the occlusion curve the obstruction curve um but yeah in in reflect right now we're using the attenuation of like the uh, high pass filter but i believe the project curve for high, high pass filter is none, so there's just no curve, and yeah. But anyway, it's so we there, dropped, you can use it. We dropped a link to the fantastic Reflect Simplified presentation you gave at the uh, Worldwide true. Online Expo, so if folks want to dig deeper into what's cool about Simplified Reflect, uh, they can jump in jump backward in time to that fantastic presentation you give. Uh, the question coming in from the chat, how costly for the CPU? Do you want to pull up the, um, the CPU meter? Or? So since we did those optimization and reduced the number of triangles, really the CPU is not used that much. Maybe you can uh, go into the library um, and, and near like the uh, or near enemies, maybe, so that we use more uh, of the special audio features. It's probably a call here if I jump to something like right, right, right. So there's a monster here. The spell is ready! Alright. Well, we're Hi, looking Mark. at reflect here, but there's also down. Um, I don't know if the sound is too loud right now. Okay, um, down uh, at the the bottom of the wise uh, window that we're looking at right now, there yeah. you can also um, enable some spatial audio. No, if you have to go to oh, the, yeah, true, yes, true, yes, true. Yes, yes. some spatial audio, um, we have like detailed stuff you can look at, um, really know where uh, your CPU is coming from. But right now we can like, can you add just spatial audio CPU? <laughs> there we go. Everything. Let's see. Uh, so then. yeah, two percent. Like it's not so bad. Um, but um, let me show. Uh, let me let. Let's look at the Geometry Viewer. Like, 
is it really using reflect right now? Because the walls are pretty far. Let's see. Look at the player again. Cam. Player. Focus. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice uh, Christmas uh, star. Yeah. Maybe you can also like... Oh, at the same time, let's uh, let's go and look at the other thing that we wanted to show is uh, the the door to the DLC area. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. before we leave here, can we crank up the orders? Oh yeah, yes, yeah. You, you can idea. change the orders yeah. uh, in the so, audio tab. What are orders? Mm. So the number of order that's really about reflect uh, is um, the number of surfaces that you will hit, like the sound will hit hit before coming back to the listener. So if we put two, then we allow the sound to hit two surfaces. Uh, if so we put four, we have all the yeah. orders. Let's put four. Let's go. Let's do it. Switching. Yeah. Four. All well, orders. I think you need to do back and then you need to move. I think also that I it will be easier to see in a smaller room. Yeah, it's right now we can see that there are some of... Uh, yeah. Like uh, the way you can just see it is go uh... here and spawn a radio instead, and yeah. then go to the. I like to just whack yeah. on the columns with the, oh, with the sword yeah. and different surfaces <laughs> and different weapons. So, so before so, we would yeah. only see yeah. yellow lines because those represent yeah. first order reflections, and uh, the red ones are the maximum uh, number of reflections you can have. So it just gradually, um, yellow, orange dark orange and red i think uh for you can actually switch orders. between these things with one two three four when you've enabled it on the so keyboard that's what i'm doing right now in order to get more reflection and so like here. this if we check uh the cpu usage for example for uh, for reflect cpu usage uh so like reflect now is has jumped to three Three percent. whole percent? Yeah. Okay, that's 3%. not very much. That's not very much. <laughs> but, Lord... but yeah, uh, spatial audio CPU is only zero uh, because they're really separate things. Uh, spatial audio CPU would be more like uh, diffraction, diffraction through portals, uh, transmission, etc. Uh, so let's do this uh, open the door um, scenario that we wanted to show. Yeah. Uh, whacking on columns is a good thing to <laughs> for reflect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Lord Dube likes to do it in real life too, so <laughs> I I agree. Lord Dube is the uh, is Jacob. <laughs> to spoil his. Uh... <laughs> nice. Good to see. You. Okay. Uh, so I I destroyed okay, some so the... crates to get the coins. Yeah, yeah, so here we had a door that was opening, like we still have one, I mean, but before we used a uh, portal obstruction to have it like the sound behind the door be obstructed. Right now, I think we can still hear it a little bit if you go near. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly uh, pick this door just to quickly show here. This yeah, is so, is a object that is now just a surface. Reflection. Yeah, before it wasn't, and we just put yeah. a uh, obstruction on the portal that is just behind. But right now we put like just oh yeah, if you remove it, then we yeah. hear the sound, <laughs> of course. So we put a geometry there to block the sound, and what we hear if you go to the Geonjek 3D viewer is the transmission of that sound. Uh, oh yeah, remove all this. See uh, arcade machine, and let's go here to the. Oh. The player. There we go. And so yeah, we, we can see there's path. a transmission path, and I've put a um, percentage lower than hundred, so we could hear a little bit uh, behind the door. If you go back as in the like inside normal view for the game, and then you try yeah, to yeah. hear. Let's solo it. Hear? Just. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, I can so hear it. Sure. You can. Okay, I cannot. Yeah, crank up my audio. <laughs> it's even my computer. Okay. Um, I thought I yeah. heard something. Uh, taking this music arcade here, soloing that one. Maybe crank that up a bit. Oh, yeah, I hear it now. 
it's a little bit low, but it's there. <laughs> you can see I'll the just, meter in the meter. Now I paid for the doll and I can click the doll. Can I do that now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Okay, so uh, let's take a look back in the game of Google here. Uh, oh, it's not live. Let's go back to live mode. It's captured quite a lot of stuff now. Oh, we did hear okay. it. Uh, oh, I heard it. Uh, yeah, and what we want to show here is that the door has moved up. And that's another thing that's new for 22.1 is that uh, you can easily move geometry right now. Uh, because you can send, there's a new function that only uh, sends like the transform. Oh my god, change the, the reflect <laughs> order. Uh, okay, so yeah, back to one. There we go. <laughs> uh, are you one right now? Because I can still see red. Yeah. Why is it. Uh, you go in the this... menu? It's a little four, okay. I did click one. And then you have to move. Uh, you're, Just quickly you're try to reconnect here. And move. Okay, there's uh... a lot of reflections there. Um... Okay. It's usually okay. at this point that I'm just like, wow, it's the Matrix. You've got like wireframes and everyone <laughs> on this stream like can look at it and know what's happening. And then I'm imagining someone wading into it for the first time going, wow, I see numbers and lines. So uh, it's really cool to be able to have that profile and real time understanding of what's happening in the game and and then watching the two of you debug it right now is is great maybe i just enter the room and okay Forget oh yeah it. sorry <laughs> um i wasn't satisfied with this so i'll just be into here i oh, know you oh. didn't allow no spatial audio, spatial audio. and then and yeah. the sound of the arcade is jumped to 12 dp like yeah, yeah. too intense yeah, because i increased it yeah yeah, yeah, but you can you can put it back to what it was before. Training. Put on spatial audio. I need to wait a few seconds for the scene to unload. There we go. <laughs> go now to library. And yeah, now we can again. hear it. So without spatial audio toggled in the menu in the Wise Adventure game, you don't get any of this obstruction transmission. Yeah. And so it's really toggling that that yeah really toggles in the toggles in the Wait. environmental yeah. reality way before opening the door so we can see it move yes. in the game object 3d viewer yeah let me just position it a bit better here so we can see it yeah, uh, zoom back a little, zoom out a little bit like this and i press play oh e. E. actually let me now try to un the, the sound is really loud. You... Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, I boosted up the uh, like <laughs> the bus. Yeah, put it back to normal. It's too intense. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before I do that, just quickly see here that as it was opening up, there was this diffraction line, the the purple one here, and the reflections coming through here as well, and then it go went over to a more direct line. So, nice. Yeah. Nice. Are yeah. the reflections tracking off of the materials? Question coming in from the chat. Are the reflections tracking make materials? Um, yes, but right now in the WAG, uh, we're using like really simplified geometries, which have like, like how does it work? Is where we can assign a different acoustic texture per sub mesh. But right now in the WAG, like most uh, objects have just one sub mesh. So they they only have one um, acoustic texture, but yes, you can show this um, if you um, click on one of. Uh, oh yeah, let's do that. On one of the oh, things in the dungeon, you need to open the dungeon. Yeah. So by that, Just hit in by play mode. What you mean is, there's acoustic textures that we define in Wise that are tied into the geometry in Unity. 
Yeah. And those acoustic textures have values that when a reflection happens off of a surface tag mm -hmm. with that acoustic texture or yeah, material. Let me show you. Gets uh, if you click on um, this thing, yeah. Uh, it has uh, it, it a has a spatial optic to you because it's more simply simpler simplified one. Mm -hmm. And on this it's, one, you add an AK surface reflector uh, component, and then uh, over there you can add acoustic textures, and it's one per sub mesh, and the, there's only one, so we just put wood, so everything's wood, and when reflect touches this surface, it it knows that it touches wood, and then wood inside of the authoring is yeah. set up for some uh, filtering uh, depending on the if you go to the audio oh. uh, share set tab yeah uh, i just yeah yes share sets here and acoustic virtual acoustic here it is textures we do have yeah. this. wood and like wood has a different absorption value Per uh, frequency. Cool. And the texture, quickly, connect the game those textures are per collider coming from Jacob. Like for each reflection, for each uh, bounce off of a surface, that texture so is you, taken into you... account. It's per, it's not per collider necessarily. It's per, per mesh. Because you like the colliders is usually uh, for the not a collider. Of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We're adding an AK surface reflector component uh, and this one needs a mesh. You can put a mesh there. Uh, if you like, if you put your, your mouse on the right there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you right can, here. you can specify. No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, you can specify the mesh. No, not this. Oh, okay. Yeah, this would mesh. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You can specify the mesh here, or yeah. if you don't specify here and you have a mesh on the same game object, it's yeah. going to take that mesh and yeah. it's going to send okay. this to spatial audio. And then if you go back to the authoring and look at the 3D game object viewer. I just quickly wanted to reopen it so it couldn't, uh, for some reason, it couldn't find my game running. Yes, and in here. Uh, no, I mean in the game object 3D viewer. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, of course. There is a. That's what I was about to do. Reconnect to the game. Maybe it's because you're you're paused. Well, I maybe. think it's because you're paused. Yes. But this should it really stop I the game think, again? I think you need to Let's click see. on pause. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I did click. <laughs> mm, okay. <laughs> we have too many things open. Um. um so so yeah so um the mesh is sent to spatial audio and then you can see it in uh the game object 3d viewer and the whole mesh is with the wood um acoustic texture but if your mesh had sub meshes then like each sub mesh can have a different acoustic texture for example i think the box are like that in the wag but the box are not spatial audio geometries so Hmm? Um, yeah. So yeah, we can we can't, we can't show this. Though. Oh, that's the wrong one. But yeah. Cool. And and is is there something special you have to do to get geometry into the three D object viewer from a Unity project? Like yes. is okay. It's that it's that process that you just described. Wait, can you? Yeah. The question from the chat is. To see the geometry of the game in Wise, we need reflect. No, we don't need reflect. What do you need? Um. So what you need is this component, AK surface reflector, because the the geometry is not just for reflect. Because we, right now we were talking about the textures and reflecting on it, blah blah blah. But also you can enable diffraction, and in that case the geometry is used for diffraction, and this is um. And, and diffraction is uh, is not a reflect thing. It's just spatial audio, and that comes with wise with no. What happened? There's no like cost, missing yeah. things. So I'm uh, just focusing, readjusting my stuff here to send mesh from the game to um, to wise. All you need to do is add this small uh, 
uh, AK surface reflector on your object, as Tali was saying. Make sure the mesh is being sent right, and uh, then it will appear. Or not, your because if you don't put it, it's not. It's going to take the mesh of your. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um. That's All right, and anyway, about the acoustic textures too, I just quickly wanted to show that that was what I was struggling with before. That in the Wise Reflect plugin, there is also, let's have a sound playing here. And you'll notice that you can see a lot more detail about the textures right here. So you can see each of the reflections listed up here in the Wise Reflect plugin. And there is concrete, none uh, concrete. So whatever you. The, it's bouncing on here in the game object profiler is okay it sees okay it hits a a wall of concrete here and so on in order to activate these absorption levels and such can you go in the eye and bump up your geometry opacity it's really low yeah put yes. it to one to one yes so we can see like the different colors uh, represent the different textures that we've set mm. in our game. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, brown is wood. Uh, blue, I think, is concrete. Piso. And we can look at the colors in our... Let's open up. Actually, yeah, when you check the share set tab. New yes. view, so we can see that at the same time. Mm. Um, but, and share sets. All of these colors here are represented. That you cool concrete, yeah. Colors, maybe a uh, one thing to important to mention about spatial audio, and now we've been through all object based audio as well, is also that you might like when it comes to spatial audio, you can also send spatial audio things as audio objects when you have a sound that f like bends on, on each side of the wall. And goes from the list uh, from the emitter to the listener. It will it will bend on each wall, and of therefore there's two different positions. And for audio optics, that results in two different audio optics. So keep that in mind when you are using spatial audio and optic based audio, because each of the sound directions in your game needs to be represented by audio optics. But then again, like think about spatial audio too as like. Do I really need to send my spatial audio as audio objects? Because spatial audio is much more of a of a way to represent the acoustics in your room, right? Not necessarily as a precise thing, but ma mainly a, a thing that, okay, I'm in this space of reflections, right? I'm standing up next to a wall so I can get that sensation, but not necessarily like hear the, the reflection on that wall going. Like I wouldn't get much more out of that precision itself. Um, so yeah, just keep in mind that if you're sending that as audio objects, it might increase the amount of audio objects that you're using uh, much more than you intend to do. Yeah, and it's back to, you know, what does your game need? What scenario, right? Uh, I'm imagining in, in a VR experience where you maybe only have one sound at a time uh, in that, in a, in a room or in a in a quiet experience where you that precision might come through or might contribute in some way. Uh, and as you're saying, like in the middle of a, a you know, rainforest, it uh, might not make any sense. So exactly. fit yeah. purpose. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that, uh, that you went all the way into the matrix. Great recovery there. Uh, <laughs> rebooting that whole thing there. Uh, and, uh, really really well done um question coming in is the precision of spatialization a per object thing or a general setting so it's really it's really this idea of uh so with reflect specifically you know each time uh, the sound of something bounces off a surface. We call that, uh, what do we call that? Uh, a reflection. <laughs> early reflection. Yeah. yeah, we call that an early reflection. <laughs> and, uh, 
And so, and so we're calculating those reflections in those orders as we showed, like bounce at one time, it can bounce two times, it can bounce three times, it can bounce four times, right? And so each of those is being calculated in space uh, and, pos and its position is being calculated. Just that's part of reflect. So. There's another thing you can uh, play with um, in the spatial dungeon is the third person listener, because um, there are some things that we decided. Okay, the, the fraction paths we decided to bring them back to the camera uh, and not the character, um, but the distance attenuation is with the character, so you can play and see if you like it. If you don't. Cannot and, make it. <laughs> and there is a fantastic page, I think, about third person perspective and spatial audio, where you get these kind of explanations and scenarios um, on how that works with spatial audio and third person. Nice. I don't know, maybe you wrote this, Tali. Uh, no, I think it was Nate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I think there's other questions I'm trying to read. Yeah, again, good insights coming from the chat. Uh, Jacob says, comparing it to LODs on graphical objects, like the main character being high resolution and other objects being uh, getting less uh, budget. Like basically saying, this sound is super important. I want super accurate details where other sounds just need to be good enough. And taking a step back to that object-based pipeline, you know, that would be, you know, that high level of detail is preserving the position of the sound all the way to a headphone spatialization as an audio object that gives you that precision. And then falling back to a channel-based main mix is that kind of good enough when you want your sound to be spatialized uh, using an endpoint binaural process? So, yeah, these are the kind of decisions you're navigating there, and and you're exactly right. It's a it's a LOD kind of system for audio precision, spatial precision, position precision. Words. <laughs> Yeah. Then I got like that. There's, there's so many decisions to be made in this. So I can only uh, uh, suggest that you go in and get comfortable with the two, three different types of, of pipelines you have here. Because, like, say that when you, if you're building a game for 3D audio, right, you you might not want the ambience necessarily to be as affected by this, this HRTF as much. Like, because it's more of a global thing around you anyway, right? Maybe. There are some specific decisions to be made for each of the sounds and for how you send it through this pipeline. So get comfortable with this pipeline because it will stay there for some time. There you go. Cool. Do we have some other stuff uh, that we want to cover in spatial audio? Um, don't, I think we, we, we talked about everything that I yeah. uh, wanted to talk about. Well, let me be the first to say great work helping to evolve the Wise Adventure game with the new features we've been working on as part of 22.1 and really just continuing to iterate on it in game development. Like, that's what you do all the way up until when you ship. And with something like a, a game as a live service or something like the Wise Adventure game, like we will continue to ship and update it over time. And so thank you for taking the time to evolve the methods in use to help people understand better how to use them. So nice work. High fives. <laughs> yeah, great work too, Damien, for you from your side as well. You did a lot of work here too. And uh, also the Again, mixing the, the entire soundscape because we haven't done that for quite a while. And even though we added various features and such. Yeah, it's, it's a great playground to be in. I'm thankful that 
it's out there for people to play in as well. So, cool. Other updates we need to touch on? Things not covered under well, there the... There are many there's smaller bug fixes and such, but I guess that uh, the, some of the things we've done been doing is like when you go to French now, you will notice that all the spatial audio uh, things are also French now. Only one of them. Uh, there are we removed some few things from graphics like the here the glow functionality, but um, and we fixed some of the the teleportation system here. I'll go back to English. Otherwise, I lost. <laughs> uh, we added new logos, those kind of things. So there's many small edits that we we are doing, and we're continuously doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah. We'll keep it updated and post a new one every major version, right? Yeah. Well, and some of these are things that that we notice as part of our process, but we're also getting reports from folks who are using the Wise Adventure game. So you can always drop us a line using the bug reporter in the Audio Kinetic Launcher. Uh, report a bug and let us know if something's not quite right. Uh, even better if you fix it and tell us how to fix it. That's cool. <laughs> just saying uh but you know uh always appreciate the feedback from folks out there to help us continue to evolve and iterate these samples uh and educational materials so thanks for that well i hope this was fun for folks uh i have certainly enjoyed our time talking through these changes um yeah. Question coming in. What about Unity 2020.3? Is it available for that version of Unity? Yeah, it is on 2020.3. It is on that version. Yeah. Is it 2022? 2020.3.40 uh, 20, and plus. <laughs> there you go. But it's but, written in well, the launcher. Yeah. It's a, there's a small label on it, but but uh, you can also it is possible to open it with other LTS versions like lower numbers of this forty, but like just get the newest one, the highest number you can get here. I don't know it, this number is super small probably on your machines. <laughs> yeah, it's the, because... it was the latest. Like the somebody says, is it the latest? It was the latest like a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. I think right now it, it's forty one or maybe it's yeah. forty two. I'm not sure, but yeah. But you can also just download the newest version of Unity, try to try it out, open it up in the newest version there. But the problem is just that there might be systems that need adaptation and such. But if if you if you're not afraid of those kind of things, just try it out and open it up. Yeah, um, I think I tried with 2021 and it was okay. <laughs> but there are there are errors that appear, but yeah, it was okay. Awesome. Great. Well, uh, I really enjoyed our time today. Thanks to folks who showed up. Great questions. Thank you for helping guide us on this wise project adventure game adventure. And <laughs> thanks again, Maz, Dolly. It's great Thank you too. to work with you. Thank Appreciate you. your experience and insight. Wise up on our hands on. Hey, if you're still with us, stay tuned because a week from now, we are going to go hands on with the Wise Authoring API and the Wise Authoring Query Language. Say it with me, Wappy and Wackle. <laughs> Bernard Rodrigue is going to be here to go deep into that, how you can extend your workflows with Wappy and Wackle. So. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again for joining us and see you on the next one. <laughs>